My name is Joanne Ingram, and I'm a school physical therapist for the County of San Bernardino. And this video is part of the county's home distance learning program. And you received a link because your child has physical therapy service in their classroom at school. So this video is going out to those students who are able to walk, but have some level of difficulty with balance or coordination. And the focus of today's video is going to be balance beam activities. So I know not a lot of you have a balance beam at home, so I'm gonna start with a few options that you can use to make your own balance beam. So here, I've rolled out about six feet of duct tape, and I put a second piece alongside just to make it a little bit wider. And if you don't have duct tape at home, you can use any kind of tape that you could find, masking tape, electrical tape, even scotch tape. It doesn't matter. You can even stretch out some pieces of yarn or string if that's all you have. All you need is a line that your child can see easily. If the weather's good and you're able to go outside, another great option is to use sidewalk chalk. When you go outside with chalk, it has the added benefit of being really appealing to most kids. So you're just going to draw a couple of lines, six to eight feet long, about three inches apart, and shade them in a little bit. Maybe have your child help you color it in so they're invested in the activity as well. And when you're outside, if you don't have chalk, there's all kinds of options. You could use a seam in your driveway or a crack in the concrete, the curb edge of the sidewalk. You can even find a stick and draw your line into some soft sand or dirt. So just remember, it doesn't have to be fancy or pretty as long as it's working for you and your child. So here I've done my balance beam about six feet long, which is a good length for a younger child that's shorter if your child is taller or has long legs, you might want to go up to about eight or nine feet. And like I said, I'm doing about three inches wide, which is a good width so they can see it easily and get their feet on, but no wider than four inches. Okay, here I'm working inside. So I put my balance beam in a place where I have a couple feet of clearance all the way around. So if my child should lose their balance and step off the beam, they're not gonna run into anything and they can't reach anything to help assist them with their balance. So the best way to get your child to participate on the balance beam is for you to do it with them. So when you're doing it with your child, it's what we call directed play. So it's not like you're saying, okay, it's time to work. We have to go do these exercises. Instead, it's just, hey, let's go play together on the beam. And even if they're not really ready to participate, it's fine for you to just go ahead and show your child that you're enjoying yourself. You're playing on the balance beam. You're having fun. And don't be afraid to be a little over the top about encouraging your child to watch you and see what you can do and be excited to see that they can have a turn to try it as well. So when you're playing with your child, it has the added benefit of giving them practice with taking turns do, during cooperative play. So I know that there's some of my students that actually have goals for working on taking turns. So this is a great opportunity to practice that while you work on your balance beam skills. So we're gonna start with a couple of basic activities to do on the beam. And the first two that we're gonna look at are just walking forward and walking sideways. So walking forward, you will just demonstrate to your child, both feet on the beam, hands free for balance, walking forward, one foot directly in front of the other with as much of the foot on the beam as is possible. 
If your child has difficulty even getting a couple of steps onto the beam, go ahead and give them a hand to assist them. But after helping them for a couple of reps, go ahead and encourage them to do it on their own. There's more benefit for them to trying to do it themselves, even if they're not successful, than for you to help them each and every time. So you want to build that understanding that you want them to do it themselves. That's where you're going. And that's what's going to happen when you work on the beam. So if you're, you let your child try it themselves and you see this, where they're just walking with one foot on and one foot off, go ahead and stop them, take them back and assist them again with your hand. Just holding their hand really emphasize getting that other foot onto the beam. If you let them go by themselves again and they still aren't even trying to get that second foot onto the beam, then instead of taking their hand, go ahead and slow them down or even stop them with an arm across their chest area and just give them a little nudge with your hand to get that other foot onto the beam. Okay, and it may be quite a while. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of repetition, especially if your child tends to be a little bit stubborn about following directions. So just hang in there, be patient, and let them understand that you're really not going to let them go forward unless they try to put their foot onto the beam. And as long as they're trying, that's great. Let them work at that level, as long as they're making an effort. Okay. The other starting point is sidestepping. So you'll demonstrate to your child standing at one end of the, end of the beam, facing sideways, and just sidestepping, step together across the length of the beam with the body turned completely to the side. And then back the other direction, when you're sidestepping, you want to make sure you go both ways so that you're working both sides of the body. And once again, if they need help, you can give them one or two hands to assist them in the beginning. But once again, encourage them to try it on their own. So another thing I like to incorporate, as your child gets comfortable and is able to take a few steps on the beam and get their feet on, I like to incorporate a little jump off the end because it just gives them a fun little goal to work toward and it motivates them to stay on the beam for the whole length. So walking forward, just a little jump off the end. And same thing with the side step. As they come to the end, just a little sideways hop off the end. Another thing I like to do with the side steps is to encourage them to try to change the size to either big steps or little steps. So I'll, I'll tell my student, let's see if you can do great big steps and see how many you can do. So as I demonstrate to them big steps, I'll count them out loud. And then when the student tries, I'll count their steps out loud too. Same thing with little tiny steps. I'll demonstrate, count them, and then encourage them to try to do more than me in the tiny little steps across the beam. So when you're doing the side steps in different sizes and you're counting out loud, there's a lot more going on than just balance and coordination and counting. You're actually working on what we call motor planning. So motor planning is just a term for your child's ability to plan their route as they walk through or move through any given situation or environment. So it's a good thing to work on. If you see your child might catch their foot and trip or run into things because they're not paying enough attention to their surroundings or their environment. In addition to that, 
It's actually a basic introduction to fractions. And it's just this simple concept that even though the beam stayed the same, I can divide the beam into four big steps or big parts or 10 little steps or parts. And that's just functional fractions at work on the balance beam. So if your child needs to stay there and work with those basic activities, that's fine. Don't be concerned. It's okay for them to need time to work on this level of balance. What you're looking for is your child being able to walk most of the way across the beam without losing their balance and having to step off, or at least six or more steps without having to step off the beam. So when they're ready to progress, let me show you a couple of things I like to do to start increasing the challenge. So the first thing is just a simple turn on the beam, standing with one foot in front of the other, just gonna pivot those feet so you're facing in the opposite direction. Okay, and when you do the pivot, you can add all kinds of different things to make it more interesting or challenging for your child. You can do two in a row, you can do step, pivot, step, pivot, or anything else that you can come up with. Don't be afraid to be creative and add in other things that you come up with because anytime they're working on the beam, it's good challenge to their balance and they're getting benefit from it. Okay, the next thing I usually do is turn that pivot into a little jump. So instead of leaving my feet on the ground, I'm just gonna do a little jump and turn. And same thing with a little jump, you can start adding other aspects to it, do a couple in a row, whatever seems to keep your child interested. And don't be worried if your child isn't actually getting up off the ground, as long as you're seeing them get some lift and make that effort, that's fine. That's an excellent place for them to work at. Let them practice and eventually they'll get it. Okay, one of the next things I like to do, because the kids are always impressed and interested in trying this, is just a switch jump, standing on the beam, just a little jump while you switch your feet. Okay. And once again, if this is super difficult for your child, go ahead and practice the movement off the beam so they get a feel for it and then take it back onto the beam and let them work on getting the, both of those feet on. Okay, so now I'm going to show you just a few other things that are higher level progressions. So even if you know your child isn't ready for these, don't be afraid to go ahead and show them because anything you can do on the beam that's impressive or interesting is going to keep them motivated to keep coming back and working with you there. Okay, so this next activity, this is called a front scale or an arabesque. So you're just gonna stand on one feet, arms out for balance, and lift that back leg. It's fine for that back leg to be relatively low. If you're able to demonstrate a higher position, that's fine too. So when your child tries this, let them go ahead, pick whatever leg they're comfortable with to start on. And after they've mastered it and they're getting that back leg up a little bit, then Try asking them to switch and do the other side. Okay. Another thing that's very challenging for a lot of kids is walking backwards on the beam. So demonstrate to them walking backwards, trying to keep as much of your foot on the beam as possible. 
So once you have them working with walking forward, maybe doing a turn or two and walking backwards, you can start connecting a couple of these activities to work on them following two or three step directions. So this is something that can be really difficult for some of our kids. So just as an example, you would start with a two step direction, walk forward and turn. So just demonstrate to them walking forward and turning. And then as they seem to be getting the hang of that, you can add the third direction, walk forward, turn, walk backwards. And just demonstrate a few steps forward, turn, and walk backwards. So once again, you're incorporating all kinds of good learning into your balance beam activities. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you is called a leap. So a leap is just a little jump that starts on one foot and lands on another. So here I'm just gonna show you a standing leap. I'm gonna start standing on my left foot and just leap onto my right. So the standing leap, you can have them use whichever foot is comfortable. They just need to start on one foot and end on the other. As they get comfortable with the concept, you can incorporate a step in and a step out. So that looks like this, step, leap, step, just like that. And then you want to switch it up, use the other foot to step, leap, and step. And don't worry so much about making sure the work is exactly even side to side. If your child is trying to leap and step on the beam, then that's excellent work and they are really challenging their balance. So it's a great job. Okay, so that's it for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching and let you all know if you have any questions or concerns, you feel free to contact me. My email is joanne.ingram at sbcss.net. And I'm always available if you have problems understanding any of the content or specific questions about your child. So once again, thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you have a great day and remember, stay healthy, stay home.